Hello, today is April 15th, 2013. We're meeting today with Mr. Herbert Reimer at his home in Loveland, Colorado. My name is Brad Hoops. I'm the interviewer for the Northern Colorado Veterans History Project. Welcome, Herb, and thanks for sitting down today to, to tell your story. You're welcome. Let's start out, if we could. Tell us a little bit about yourself, your date of birth, where you were born, a little bit about your family. Okay, I was born on February 28th, 1930 in a small town in Kansas, uh, Bueller, Kansas. Bueller? Bueller. And uh, it was a small, uh, very conservative community. Um, had two churches in town. And they were both Mennonite, by the way, making it really conservative. Mm -hmm. And uh, but that's where I grew up. Um, Dad at the time had a drugstore, and we lived up a, in an apartment above the drugstore. And uh, it was something new to him because he had been a teacher right out of high school. He was 22 years old when he graduated from high school. We'd gone off to work first, came back, and uh, bought this drugstore. And um, I was just a little tight. In fact, I was born there at uh, not in the drugstore, but while they were running the drugstore. And uh, I spent my first two or three years there in Bueller and uh, there. And then uh, he became the uh, uh, agent for Kansas Gas and Electric. And uh, that changed things. So we, he sold the drugstore, so we moved and rented a little house and another little house. And we stayed there in, in this town uh, until my eighth grade, and he decided he wanted to go back and be a teacher. He had had only two years of college at Pittsburgh State, and uh, so he had to go back to school. And at that time, he was about 40, 41 years old. And so he did, and uh, we moved from this town of Bueller to Russell, Kansas, and uh, stayed one year. <laughs> Then he got a job as an elementary principal. Actually, he was my uh, woodworking coach and my basketball coach huh. in Russell. Uh -huh. Then he decided he wanted to go into administration. He became an elementary principal, and we moved back into Reno County, Kansas, in a little town called Pretty Prairie. And uh, I was three years there. Uh, highlight of that was uh, my sophomore year when uh, We won the state basketball championship. Oh, wow. Had a good year, and uh, I was kind of. Uh, I, I've got to go back to Bueller. It was a basketball town, so if you didn't play basketball, you know you're you're not part of the town. Well, anyway, um, I uh, I was a sophomore that year, and I I worked myself up to starting on the on the team, and we. Uh, won the state and that was the highlight there. Now is it Pretty Prairie? Or? It's Pretty Prairie. Okay, okay. Three years. Then Dad moved to a town called Haven and I went there my senior year hmm. and I made friends right away and and we had a pretty good team and in fact we uh, uh, my senior year we ran up against Bueller. It was in the same league as Pretty Prairie <laughs> and uh, ran up against them uh, and uh, they won the state championship that year. That was my senior year. And not, not the same. They were in a Class A. We were Class B. And uh, they came down, and they were undefeated, and we beat them. <laughs> so that was kind of an interesting story there. And uh, so that was basically it uh, through high school. And... Uh, then I went to junior college, uh, right next door to Hutchison Junior College, and had another uh, story on basketball. We uh, we finished second in the nation that year. Really? Yeah. Semifinals got beat by Tyler, Texas, and uh, so that was <laughs> a good step. Yeah, yeah. And uh, but my uh, senior year in Haven, uh, maybe where I'm getting ahead of myself, but uh, that was. Uh, uh, year that I actually had the opportunity of getting into the military. I don't know if you want to know that. Oh, but, yeah, please, yeah. yeah. Well, our, our music teacher, uh, band teacher, uh, 
belonged to an Army Reserve band. And uh, he said, Herb, he said, you know you're going to get drafted. And I said, yeah. He said, why don't you enlist? So my 18th birthday came up that year in February. And so roughly that'd be what, 48 then? That's 48. Yeah, so war, yeah. World War II is already over. Yeah, they, it was over. They still had the draft in, oh, yeah. in place? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. In fact, going back to back to uh, Pretty Prayer, I remember the seniors quitting school early to go into the military. Yeah, as soon as you're telling me the story, I'd like to go back and yeah. talk a little bit about the war years there. Yeah. 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 Right. So anyway, I, I joined the reserves, and they had that uh, the band, Fifth Army Band, Reserve Band. Uh, got to play basketball, and that was fine. And then uh, I decided to make a move college-wise. So uh, I had been offered a scholarship at uh, this Southwestern College, it's a Methodist school in southeastern Colorado, or in Kansas. And so I checked there, and uh, they had a radio station on campus, and I was interested in sports journalism radio and, and writing and uh, so I, I transferred there my sophomore year there was no the closest reserve organization was in Wichita I didn't have a car no way to get there <laughs> so I skipped meetings that summer I got a job because I needed money to go to college the next year and uh, I didn't go to meetings and miss summer camp so I started my junior year, and uh, in September I got a letter saying I had not fulfilled my reserve obligation, and so you're going, you're, and that was in 1950. Oh boy. And uh, so they said, uh, we're uh, going to put you on active duty. So. <laughs> were you able to finish out college, or it was? No, no, that was my junior year, I just started. Oh boy. October the 15th is when I left for the military. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, let, uh, let me quickly back up before sure. we move into, the, into your, uh, continuing on with your story. Back up, uh, um, if you could talk a little bit about, I don't know how far east uh, in Kansas Bueller is, but was uh, were you guys affected by the dust storms at all? Did they get... Uh... Oh, well, well, I grew up in, in the 30s. Um, the, the dust storm years. I was still in Bueller, which is central Kansas. Okay. And we, we were somewhat affected. Uh, I remember uh, mom soaking some cloth and putting them in the windows and that type of thing. Uh, so, uh, you know, with water. Um, you know, I don't have vivid memories yeah, okay. of that. Yeah. I, I, uh, I've seen pictures of, of the dust storm that happened in our area, but yeah. for some reason or other, I just, uh, I guess I, I just didn't. Yeah, yeah. I can't visualize right. it really. Right, yeah. and, and you would have been too young to remember it as well, but uh, uh, talking with your family and such, did, was your family much affected by the Great Depression? Uh, you know, <laughs> I've, always, I've always said that uh, we probably were poor, but we didn't know it. Mm -hmm. They were, you know, those small towns, we were all white middle class people and not anybody real wealthy. Uh, the majority, uh, you know, in school probably were farmers, came off the farm. And uh, we had adequate, uh, I, I remember dad ordering 100 day old chickens, came in a cardboard box in the mail. And he built himself a brooder, and we would raise those chickens for food. And I can remember butchering day. I can do that. Remember that really well. Had a large garden. Uh, he, I don't know if he rented a, a vacant lot or not, but uh, we had potatoes and I don't know what all. Um, and I know I wore hand-me-down clothes. I had a, a cousin that was a year or two older than I. And I, I got his, some of his clothes. So, you know, my guess that 
it was there, but we yeah we didn't know any different. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And speaking of family, uh, any brothers or sisters? I had two sisters. Uh, How'd you fit in that order? Yeah, uh, my sister Betty, uh, who also went into the army when she graduated from college, uh, two and a half years older. And then I had a little sister, uh, Wanda, who uh, was nine years younger than I. Okay. And just briefly, and then we'll, we'll jump back into your story, but talk about uh, the war years, World War II, and uh, what it was like on the home front as far as rationing, and, and you were talking about the kids, seniors all yeah, leaving for school. Right, yeah. Rationing, uh, you know, the sugar, uh, no dentine chewing gum or <laughs> that type of thing. No Hershey bars, you know, chocolate, you couldn't do that. You had... Uh, you had stamps for gas. You were limited on the amount of gasoline you could use every month. Um, I don't remember much else other than the, the patriotism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the songs that they had. You know, I, I really don't okay. remember that much other than uh, I had a cousin that uh, was drafted. And, you know, I mentioned the Mennonite church and they were uh, pacifists. Mm. Uh, they encouraged you not to go into the military, but they had that uh, CO, conscience objector, mm -hmm. and, and a non-combatant role that you could go in the regular army. And my cousin was a medic in a, a, a non-combatant status. He didn't carry any weapons with him. And uh, he, he was on in the, the Normandy Beach mm. invasion mm. as a medic. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, you know, other than that, I probably, dad was too old for World War II and he was too young for World War I. I had an uncle, Uncle Adolf, that was in World War One. He was a couple years older than that, older than Dad, but uh, Dad just missed it age-wise. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I talked about the church being against combat, and, and that was uh, one thing that I wondered. You know, when I, I didn't give it any thought when I enlisted in the reserves. I, I, I guess that wasn't, yeah, yeah. You know, I wasn't thinking that way. Right, 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 yeah. right. Okay, well, let's jump forward. So you got that notice and uh, you ship off to uh, basic then, I suppose, weren't when, you? Well, <laughs> uh, my first uh, assignment was Fort Lewis, Washington. Oh, right off the bat? Right off the bat. And uh, I went in there with, uh, I got on the train and I went to Fort Lewis and was there with all these World War II veterans. And they had a place there called the North Fort, which was a two week refresher course in combat and then overseas. <laughs> so I was actually headed for overseas there. Without any, no. uh, just no basic training, huh? No, and, and, and then that's what caught up. Then they finally realized every morning we'd get up and we would stand in formation and they'd call off names and they were bust down over to the North Fort for that two week refresher course. And, and they never called my name. And then they got toward the last where they were <laughs> running out of people, I guess. And, and uh, they realized then that I hadn't had basic. So I had to wait around for a little while. I don't think we were in Fort Lewis more than two or three weeks. I, I don't, anyway, uh, at the end, uh, they realized I had to have basic training. So they sent me to Fort Ord, California. <laughs> and I don't know if you want me to go on from yeah, there. Yeah, please, yeah. So uh, Fort Ord, California for basic, and uh, then overseas. And, and how was, uh, I got a couple questions in regards to this time period. How was that, uh, I'm assuming, like many of your generation, uh, growing up outside of you, know, you guys moving from small towns that you pretty much just traveled within Kansas. Now well, you're off to Washington. I, yeah. <laughs> what was that like? I mean, was there any, probably being away from home, yes. for, was there any tinge of homesickness there? Yeah, you know, I, I don't remember that there was. Yeah. Uh, there had to be a little. There had to be, but I, I, it, 
in my mind, I don't remember that mm. I was really oh, okay. that bad off. The only time I really got homesick was when I was a Boy Scout at age 13 and we went to camp in Colorado from oh. Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't realize the homesick until after the week when we got back to Kansas and saw my parents. <laughs> oh, be darned. <laughs> but no, I, I, I guess I wasn't. I, I was a little intimidated in that uh, these veterans there from World War II, they knew the ropes and I didn't. And, and that was going to be my sec second question. How was that adjustment going from civilian life into military life? Uh, you know, I, I think I made it fairly easily. It, it, uh, it didn't really affect me that much. Uh, there was always that uh, wondering what was going to happen next. Mm, you yeah. know, like like uh, being there in Fort Lewis and, uh, and, uh, and then the military, it, it was really difficult. They said Fort Ord was one of the best uh, training uh, boot camps that there was the most difficult and uh, there were some things there that uh, well when you had to crawl under the barbed wire and <laughs> go through with the machine gun live shells oh you know <laughs> and uh, but I, I guess I still was kind of naive in a way and that uh, you know we were training for actually combat mm. and uh, and it did bother me a little, and going back to my, my growing up in the Mennonite church, uh, wondering if that's something I needed to do, because, you know, we're here to teach you to kill somebody. Yeah, right. Basically, yeah. That, that was the message. We're going to make you strong, and, and so that you can go over there and, and kill the enemy. And uh, I remember a couple of sessions I had with the chaplain about that. So... Was there any, any thought of filing for a, a CEO? You know, no, yeah. there wasn't. It, there wasn't. I was, I was concerned about how I would be able to handle it, and, and I guess whether I had made the right decision. But I don't think I ever had that uh, thought that maybe I should have filed for a for, CEO. That never entered my mm. mind. Yeah. yeah. No, huh. it didn't. But... Uh, it, it was uh, good in a lot of ways. You came out pretty healthy. They fed you well, but you really worked hard. In fact, I, I gained, uh, I think, almost 25 pounds in the, in the, at Fort Ord in the basic training. Lost a couple of inches of the ladies almost. <laughs> well, do you think uh, being, uh, being a country boy and, and, and it sounded like very athletic that you had an edge over like some of the city boys? or Could be. Uh, we had one city boy, I never forget his name, was Robert Zwerlein, and he was a, a spoiled brat, I think. I, I think he came from a really wealthy family. Mm. And he found ways of getting out of KP and all kinds of, they call him gold bricker, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he had a hard time with the physical part of it. Because they, you know, every morning you had to, tough calisthenics, and, uh, and they shaped you up. Well, they, you had to, you yeah. know, to do the job they wanted you to do. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so yeah, I, I guess I didn't have that difficult time adjusting. It, uh, a few times, you know, I was thinking what, what's, what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So you finish up at Fort Ord and... Uh, finished and up at Fort Ord okay. and I, I can tell you an interesting story. <laughs> You said the look of the draw, you know, and the fact that right. I never went overseas. Right. Uh, they had us go out to a landing strip. There were two, uh, we just finished basic. I called the folks, said I'm overseas, going overseas. I had oh. no, no furlough to come No home. furlough. Oh, no, oh boy. No time off. Got out to the landing strip. They had two cargo planes they were loading. And they called off the roster, and they had two rosters. And they finished one roster, filled the plane. Filling the second plane, there were three of us left and said, the plane is full. <laughs> and that was it. Wow. And I had some people I know, in fact, uh, one from, not from my hometown, but from Kansas that was on those, got on those planes. And uh, the word was he lasted two days on the front lines. Yeah. Wow. Anyway, 
So, <laughs> went back to the barracks and was assigned to Fort Bliss, Texas for anti-aircraft training. And, uh, by choice, is that something you would... No. Oh, okay. No, that was this. just the way it was. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, I went from a MOS, a musician's MOS, to... <laughs> anyway, uh, and uh, went to Fort Bliss, and where we trained with anti-aircraft. It was a... They called it Advanced Basic, but basically it was a, another school. Well, I mean, it was an aircraft school, anti-aircraft. So, did that, and... Uh, got in with the, we had 90 millimeter cannons and uh, M, uh, caliber 50 machine guns, but they were on a quad mount. They were four, four guns, little turret, and you controlled everything, elevation uh, with that. It was an M55 mount. And uh, we did, our targets were, uh, Radar planes, RCATs they called them, that were towed by, uh, or no, those were uh, radar controlled. And then we had sleeves that were pulled by an airplane. I don't know how many yards behind the airplane. And uh, they used those for, with the 90 millimeters. They'd have uh, tanks that uh, would go across on a track. They weren't. They looked like tanks. I don't think imagine they were regular tanks. Mm -hmm. And we had incendiary uh, uh, ammunition for the caliber 50, 50 caliber, with four of them firing at one time. And uh, that's what I trained on there. What, what was life like down at Fort Bliss? <laughs> we didn't like it. <laughs> we were in fairly decent barracks, well, your regular Army barracks yeah. in the ROTC came in for summer camp. They moved us out of those barracks where these ROTC guys and put us in tar paper shacks. <laughs> four, four bunks to a shack, and it, they're really small. And the dust storms were horrible. It got so bad after a while, I'm jumping ahead in my story. <laughs> Three of us went in put for overseas duty. We oh, right. there. <laughs> we, we felt we were in a foreign country down there. <laughs> uh, so, and uh, then we had our overseas orders there. So this again, yeah, number three, yeah. And uh, I, had, I had hurt my back playing football, and uh, these ninety millimeters. They had these heavy outriggers that you had to move, the pick up and they kind of folded and and, uh, uh, and for traveling. And I was helping with that and I wasn't lifting the way I should have with my back. And, and I kind of hurt the back a little bit. And they sent me to the hospital, took x-ray and found out what I knew I had from football injury. And, and uh, so they had me go to physical therapy. And, uh, but again, put on overseas orders and I'd call the folks. I said, I can come home for three days, but I said, I'm going overseas. And they gave us our shots and whatever else, and clothing. And, and uh, I came home, or came home, came back to the area uh, from uh, the hospital where I had some physical therapy. And they said, you're wanted in the CO office. And I said, what for? And they said, I don't know, they just need you there. So I went in there and I was told, <laughs> told I was staying in Fort Bliss as a cadre. Wow. <laughs> so that, that was the last time. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Um, and you finished out your I service finished there, there in Fort yeah, Bliss? I, I was, uh, and uh, it was interesting about what that did to, to my career choice. Uh, I could tell you about that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I taught some classes there, but a drill instructor, well, just a, you know, the cadre uh, mm -hmm. job. Uh, and uh, I got my promotion there to, from corporal to, I'd already gotten one from, I was private uh, E2 when I went in and uh, then I got my E3 corporal and then went to sergeant. And I don't know whether that's 
when I got my, no, I don't think when I got my second rocker there, uh, staff sergeant, which I finally, that's how, I, when I was discharged. But anyway, um, I, I was promoted to sergeant and did that job and, uh, well, the rest of my career, I mean, uh, on active duty, it wasn't very long. And so that, that was, uh, that was interesting duty. But I enjoyed the teaching. And uh, so when I came home, I gave up my sports journalism <laughs> dream and uh, took some education classes. And uh, went to summer school, a couple summers, and so I graduated only a year later, actually, oh, really? than, than what I would have. Uh -huh. yeah. Were you able, did you take advantage of the GI Bill to finish out your school? Yes, event? I did. Uh -huh. I, I can't remember how much that was, but it, it helped. I, I, I still enjoyed uh, writing and, and I covered sports for the college and uh, had a column uh, twice a week in, for the United Press in, in Kansas City. I set my stories in there. Oh, interesting. And so uh, I kept that that going, that part going. But uh, yeah, the GI Deville did help me. I uh, didn't pay everything, but certainly it was, yeah. it was good, yeah. it was good. The reverse question to what I asked you earlier, how was that uh, uh, coming out of the service back in civilian life, was that much of an adjustment? Uh, Not for me. No, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I got back and, and you know, again, my dad's in, influence uh, he made sure I was always had a job in the summertime whatever and uh, so I found something to do uh, until uh, I, I think I got yeah I started a second semester of college I, uh, so I didn't have I think I got uh, discharged from active duty in October and so I worked found a part-time job I don't remember what it was and then started school in, in January and stayed that way and uh, found a part-time job in the summertime take a few classes and so I, I, I it, that really wasn't difficult yeah no, good yeah I was glad to get out <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> had a chance to go to OCS, Officer Candidate School, and I turned it down. Yeah. Uh, I, I felt a duty, you know, the, the, the obligation that I had, but uh, I didn't want to make a career out right, of it. Right, right, right. And you filled that, fulfilled that obligation, so. Yeah, I guess, yeah. 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 <laughs> So you came back, got your, uh, well, I guess we'll continue on into uh, 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 your post-military years then. So you came back, got your degree in education. Mm -hmm. and I did. Take, take your story from there then. Okay. Um, I did something I said I'd never do. I, I had interviewed for two places, I guess. And, uh, and this is summer. I graduated in the summer. And so there wasn't much time get a job. And the job turned up in Haven, Kansas, where I graduated. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, by that time, Dad had moved on and uh, he wasn't there. But I went back to Haven and I, I taught journalism, uh, English, and did some coaching. And uh, I was in charge of the newspaper and annual. So I I still had that interest in journalism, which is which is was good, and uh, it was a good place to start a teaching career in that you didn't have discipline problems. It was a small school, mm -hmm. we had a uh, hundred and fifty students, grades nine through twelve, and uh, you know at that time you could. Uh, if a student needed to be disciplined a little bit, you could call the parents and make sure that <laughs> they knew about yeah, it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the story, you know, if I got one spanking in school, I'd get another one when I got home. <laughs> but uh, we, I 
didn't have any, any and I've had uh, some great contacts with with former students. Uh, that's that's been really, really a lot of fun. I'll bet, yeah, yeah. Fun. yeah, still do. And uh, this town of Haven, they have uh, Haven Days in October every year, and uh, they have class reunions. And so I'll be going back to to there for my sixty fifth class reunion. Hmm. This in, summer in this in October. Oh, it'll okay. be in October. I'm looking forward to that. I, I got an email from a good friend of mine that we were, uh, well, like I say, you know, I was there just one year. But yeah, I made yeah. a lot of friends. Yeah. And uh, uh, this friend of mine who was a career military, he was ROTC and, and uh, he's the president of our alumni association. So he told us they were going to have that. 65th class reunion at that time and then the entire school uh, you know they come back for that and so uh, the first time I went back it was fun they had uh, places for the uh, by the decade mm -hmm. so I went to our place for the 40s and then I'd go to the room <laughs> for the 50s and meet all the students that I'd had wow. and so th th those are uh, that's that's a fun time yeah yeah now, how many years did you teach in Haven then? I did three years. Three? Okay. And then I went to a little town of Halstead, Kansas, and uh, not too far from there, actually the same league. And uh, taught one year there, and they wanted me to teach driver ed. So I had to find a, and you had to have a class. I had to take a class. And the closest place where they had a class for <laughs> Dryer ed teachers was the University of Colorado. And so I came out here and <laughs> took a class and uh, so I could teach driver ed. And that's how I got acquainted with Colorado. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, you want me to go on? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> keep, keep going here. Well, I, bet. Uh, I took an cl introductory class to guidance that, that summer. And I really enjoyed it, and I told myself, you know, I, I think I want to be a counselor. So I uh, went back and uh, told them, no, I, I'm sorry, I, I was still there. And a job opened up in Rocky Ford, Colorado. Uh, it's a elementary principal from there was in one of my classes. And we had gotten to visit after class one time. She said, I've got just the job for you. Now, that Colorado, I said, that, that sounds like that would be a thought. <laughs> so <laughs> I uh, went for the interview, and they offered me the job. And uh, I said, I can't take it until I've been released from Haven. And I said, I will request or ask them to look for another candidate for that job that I was going back to at Not Haven Halstead. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I said, I won't, I won't abandon you. I said, I'll take, I'll keep that job there at Halstead if you can't find a replacement for me. And I thought they probably won't because I was, uh, teaching driver ed, journalism, mm -hmm. English, and coaching. I was assistant coach for all three sports, football, basketball, and track. That's all we had. And uh, then I was going to be the head track coach uh, the f next, that second, that year. So I thought, well, they probably won't find somebody. Well, they did. <laughs> and so I went to Rocky Ford <laughs> and uh, didn't get to coach, which I would have liked. Didn't have to, didn't sponsor newspaper in, in the annual anymore. But uh, I helped develop a, the curriculum for English elementary through through high school there, wow, wow. and uh, went back to school in the summertime and got my master's degree from Colorado University in 1960. Went back as a counselor and as the first counselor at that school at the time. I started the program there, and that's uh, I, I taught there for six years. And uh, 
interesting how I found this part of the country. <laughs> it, uh, I, was, I was a student council sponsor, and the state student council conference was at CSU. So I brought our officers to CSU for the student council conference. And one afternoon, I, uh, they were in session, and I just drove down here and saw Loveland. <laughs> I said, I gotta come here. <laughs> really? Yeah. Huh? And uh, went back, and I, I told uh, the principal and superintendent of the school was there. I was kind of friends with the superintendent. I said, I'm thinking about leaving next year if I can find a job. And uh, no, nah, you don't want to do that. I said, well, I don't know. Well, Boulder opened up. Uh, Fairview, there was a brand new high school. And uh, I applied there. I think I did, I don't remember, but I didn't get the job. There was one in Fort Collins, and uh, that one wasn't exactly one of them. They called it Dean of Students or something rather than Counselor, and it had all the discipline to handle, and I thought, that's not what I want. And uh, then this job opened up in, here in Loveland. Perfect place. <laughs> <laughs> well, back up and talk about it. this whole time. Were you uh, single, or you had met Phyllis yet? I was single. Well, actually, I met Phyllis teaching at Haven our first year. Okay. Yeah, and uh, so uh, then she quit teaching and uh, moved to Denver. Actually, and uh, I went on, we had a little problem there at school that we didn't like, and she left, and then I, I took on this job at, ha at Halstead, and uh, we corresponded, uh, you know, not anything serious. Yeah, yeah. And uh, then I came to summer camp, I remember that, I came to summer camp at Fort Carson, I was still in the reserve. Uh -huh. In my last, my last, uh, yeah, I, I was uh, fully discharged then after that. But I came out to Carson for summer camp and I uh, called Phyllis or wrote to her or something and I, I said, why don't we get together after, because we'd been corresponding mm -hmm, pretty regularly. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, I'll just drive up. And she happened to be in summer school at, Fort, at uh, CSU. So I came up here and, and uh, got reacquainted. And uh, when that, uh, she was also working in, uh, in Denver. Anyway, uh, I got this lead on the job in Rocky Ford and I said, I'm going to Rocky Ford to interview for the job. I said, would you drive up along with me? So she, she went along, man, <laughs> this is really something. <laughs> uh, we, we got there and I interviewed for the job. They offered me the job and they said, and the interview was over and they said, when'd you get here? And I said, well, we got here about so-and-so time. And, and uh, I said, we, who's we? And I said, it's a friend of mine. <laughs> so what does she do? And I said, well, she's, she works in Denver. And I said, um, she was a, home ec teacher in, in, uh, in uh, Kansas, where we both taught. Home ec, we got a home ec opening. <laughs> and and uh, I said, oh, I don't think she'd be interested. Well, she went on to taking the job. <laughs> so we, we got married then. Uh, oh, that's a great story. <laughs> And uh, I still had a, another year. Now I had more than another year, but I, I, I was still in summer school working on my master's. And uh, so we decided we wanted to get married. And uh, the only time we could do it was at Christmas time. That was the longest break we had. <laughs> so that's what we did. Yeah. Wow. Uh -huh. So then how many years altogether were you in education? 
Uh, 34. Wow. Yeah, I had... Uh, yeah, I had four in Kansas and 30 in Colorado. Hmm. And did Phyllis continue on with her uh, uh, teaching? Then, no, early? she quit teaching after uh, our, our children were adopted. Uh, Lisa was three weeks old, I think, when we got her, and that was when we were in, by, in uh, graduate school at CU, and we weren't expecting her <laughs> because we had stopped in and uh, and uh, talked to the social worker that was taking our case, and uh, he said, "Well, it looks like about November we'll have a baby for you." Well. They called, and I, I must have given them my folks' telephone number to contact us because mom called, and uh, I, I, I don't know how all this worked out because Phyllis was working in a bookstore, hmm. and uh, she got the call from mom to call the social worker that they had a child for us. <laughs> and we were in a one-room apartment, <laughs> so we took her. <laughs> Our green stamps and bought a bottle, bottle order, warmer and a car bed and, and it was crazy. It was crazy. So, 1960, uh, uh, I got my master's. I became a father, and I got a new job as a counselor. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> so things happen fast. Yeah. 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 So that was that was it. Then, as career-wise, I was here one year, and I was assigned to uh, Bill Reed, uh, not Bill Reed, Truscott, which was a junior high at the time, seventh and eighth grade, and halftime birthed junior senior high. So I spent two and a half days a week here, and two and a half at birthed, and then the director of guidance. Uh, he was also the school psychologist, got a job in uh, Kwajalein Island, and he left. And uh, Stan and, and Mr. Reddelsdorf, the superintendent, wanted me to take his place. And I told him I didn't think I wanted to do that. <laughs> uh, it just sounded like a job that I wasn't prepared for. And. So they kind of twisted my arm. I said, okay, I'll give it a try. And I went to summer school at, at UNC to uh, get certified to do individual uh, psychological and intellectual assessments. Oh, wow. And uh, did the job of the school psych, although I wasn't uh, qualified as a psychologist, but I was certified to do the testing. So I did that, uh, took that uh, director of guidance job and then the assistant superintendent, uh, Stan Stansbury, Claude Stansbury, was working on his doctorate at C CU, and he had to leave for a semester and be on the campus for the semester. And uh, they said, uh, and he was in charge of, uh, one of his duties was uh, in charge of special education. And they said, uh, we'd like for you to take that while he's gone. And we didn't have a large, uh, I think we had uh, two speech therapists, maybe in, uh, I think three teachers, special class teachers at the time. It wasn't a big job. So then when he came back, uh, they said, we want you to, <laughs> we want you to do that full time and uh, or stay with it so i said okay so i did that and then they added the federal programs and then they added which was head start and remedial reading and then they added uh, testing standardized testing and home study or uh, home taught kids uh, and home bound the ones that uh, had a physical condition that they couldn't come to school, go to school. 
and hired teachers for that. So I ended up with, I don't know, 13 different programs. Wow. I think. <laughs> And I got burned out, and in 1987, I said, I think I'll retire. <laughs> and been retired ever since? So I did. Yeah. I, I, I subbed for a counselor at Pill Reed a couple times, or one time, tw twice at Loveland High. Um, my last subbing job was for the school psychologist at... Uh, Divided my time between Truscott Elementary and and uh, Winona Elementary School, and uh, saw a lot of need there at Truscott. So I went back and I said, "Do you have room for a volunteer?" And uh, I said, "Yeah, <laughs> I've been doing that for I don't know, 16, 17 years." Is so, that right? Yeah, kindergarten <laughs> now. The, the teacher I. I uh, volunteered for uh, Mrs. Randall, wonderful teacher. Uh, she was in fifth grade, she's a fifth grade teacher, and then she moved to third grade, I think, for two years, and then to kindergarten. So I'm still in kindergarten, <laughs> once a week, yeah. uh, uh, in the afternoons, and uh, it's, it's, it's good. Yeah. I don't have any grandkids, so I call those my grandkids. Yeah, 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 <laughs> uh, wow. Well, that's fun. Well, yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, we'll, uh, we'll start to wind down this interview. Sure. Uh, uh, you'd mentioned Lisa. Uh, other children as well then? Uh, we had a son we adopted, and uh, he passed away in, oh, I have to stop and think, 92. Wow. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, he was a great kid. Mm -hmm. He had a lot of talent and a lot of, a lot of ways. He could have been an artist. He just a natural. Mm -hmm. he, he did uh, caricatures and uh, our birthday cards were <laughs> self-made. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, he, he was pretty talented. Yeah. And Lisa, uh, Mark went to Western State for a year and uh, he didn't particularly the wrestling coach there wanted him to come out for wrestling. He he took wrestling as a PE class there, and the coach said, "What are you doing here?" He said, "You need to be on the wrestling team." <laughs> and uh, he said, "No." He said he, he liked it, but it, the competition that he, he, more like a, a hobby, I guess. Mm -hmm. But uh, and Lisa uh, went to UNC for a year and a half, and, and she made the mistake and quit, and. She, she just quit for a semester. She went to Steamboat to work in the ski or you know, the industry. And I told myself she'll never go back to college. And she <laughs> didn't. But she's done well. She's done very well. She lives in Chicago. And uh, has a, she got in the travel business. Uh, she finally decided that travel was an area she wanted. And we found uh, the Air Academy School in uh, uh, Washington, and uh, they they teach them to be primarily uh, either flight that not flight attendants uh, working at the airport uh, or in reservations, and that's where she wound up, and she worked for United Reservations for few years in Denver, or DIA, well, it was Stapleton at the time, transferred to Georgia and to Atlanta in their call center there, reservations. Then they said the, they had a mess in Chicago and they took her boss and sent her to Chicago and he said, I, I won't go unless Lisa goes with me. <laughs> so that's where she wound up and that's where she still is. And, uh, but she doesn't work for the airlines anymore, but she's still in travel. Um, she got in with some different companies and uh, was in charge of their travel arrangements, corporate travel. And she works now for uh, Grant Thornton Accounting Firm, which is worldwide. And uh, she uh, negotiates with hotels and airlines for their corporate travel. And then they added events planning, so she plans all their uh, conferences and that type of thing. 
So she's done real well. She loves the city. We go back there once, sometimes twice a year. We're going on a cruise with her. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Next month we're going on a river cruise from Budapest to Nuremberg. So we're looking forward to yeah. that. Yeah. So she's done really well for herself. So. Wonderful. Yep. Yeah. Well, Herb, as we wind down this interview, is there anything I didn't ask you that you wanted to talk about or any of the stories that kind of floated to the top as, as we've been talking here? Yeah. So ideally, or do you think ideally we've rounded out your story that you... I think, yeah, I think pretty much. I, I think the, the three times I was on yeah. overseas and it never happened was just amazing. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. It, uh, yeah. There's somebody in control. Right. <laughs> Well, the last question I usually like to ask in these interviews is, how do you think that that period of time you were in the, in the Army uh, played a role in your life, affected your life, your life, changed your life, or did it? Or was it just simply just a chapter in your life that you went through? How would you answer that? Oh, that's, a, that's a good question. But, I, it, you know, at the time, it, I don't know that it did change. I, I think, you know, the one thing that had changed my difference in career choice, mm, Okay, uh -huh. definitely, that, that was... Uh, and the fact that my dad had been in education, uh, I don't know, that even played a part in it. I, I don't think it did, but it could have. But I think that's, that's one thing that came out of the military that I, um, I, 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 I don't know, I just, I, I just felt like it was an obligation that I needed to fill. Mm -hmm. I, I mm -hmm. felt that, yeah, yeah. for sure. And uh, I was glad I did it. Uh, and I, I admire the people that make it a career. I admire the people that have to uh, really put their life on the line, which I didn't have to do. But uh, I, I think sometimes about should we have the draft again so that <laughs> More people get a chance to do that, yeah, <laughs> whether yeah. they want to or not. I, I think it can change lives. I just finished a book um, about an Iraqi veteran that was wounded badly and, and had a post-traumatic uh, experience, and uh, a very interesting story in that uh, he got connected with a service dog that, that really has saved his life, basically, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, because he was really struggling with his, his uh, handicaps there. Yeah. So I, I it, you know, I, I just made the adjustments pretty well, I think. It didn't bother me that much. I, I think back of dad changing towns, like my sis went to three different high schools, but she, uh, struggled more than I did. I I just went with the flow. You know, when yeah. Dad came home and said, well, we're moving, and it's my senior year in high school, and I've got all these buddies, and now I had to play basketball and football against the guys that I had <laughs> played with. Oh, uh, yeah. You know? And yet, I, I did it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know why. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. So, uh, adjusting to different uh, the different changes in your life that come about, I, I, it just didn't bother me that much. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad, yeah, like I say, I'm glad I did it. Yeah. It, 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 was, it, was, it was good for me. Yeah. It was good for me. Yeah. Very good. Well, on that note, we'll, uh, we'll close down this interview. I want to thank you for sitting down today to tell your story, but uh, just as important, I want to thank you for your service to our country. You're welcome. Uh, this is just a picture that they took when we were uh, in basic training at Fort Ord, California. Uh, this picture is of, uh, taken at, uh, when we were on bivouac and uh, out of Fort Bliss, Texas, out on the desert. And uh, I guess I've got my car being in with me and uh, taking a break, it looks like. <laughs> uh, this is a picture of uh, the 90 millimeter 
uh, anti-aircraft cans that we uh, we trained on. I'm a cadre at that time, uh, taking the troops out on bivouac again and and setting up these uh, these weapons uh, together with the the uh, 50 caliber machine gun weapons. Now you had mentioned uh, you talked earlier about hearing aids. Do you attribute any of your hearing loss or? To any of I've wondered that because we didn't have earplugs, um, and they they made a uh, you know the sound was, and it could be yeah. a, a residual thing from that. Uh, that's possible, because you're right up there next to that, and and when those uh, uh, when those shells went off, it it is a loud noise, and yeah. it sure could have. It could have. And this is a picture of the uh, caliber 50 machine guns that are mounted on M55 mount uh, quad uh, machine guns. And they were used for uh, anti-aircraft again. And we had uh, moving targets. One was on a track that was uh, like a sh uh, tank. And then uh, the other target was a, a sleeve pulled by an airplane that we'd uh, fire at. 